Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I am your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Uh, as always, head over to reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, grab your free uh, PDF on the top 200 drugs. Just a unique little uh, study guide that might help you for board exams or if you just want to brush up clinically, things like that. Uh, we've got uh, that 31-page PDF absolutely for free. And uh, we'll also send you kind of alerts when we've got new podcasts out and, and other content available too. So again, take advantage of that. Uh, if you enjoy the podcast today, definitely leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. That's greatly appreciated. And I am going to start uh, discussing topiramate, uh, which is the, the drug of the day today. Uh, brand name of this medication is Topamax. Uh, primary uses... Uh, I would say it's technically classified as an anticonvulsant. Uh, I would say by far probably the most common conditions I see it used for uh, definitely is migraine, probably the, the top of the list there. Um, occasionally for seizures, um, also see it used in uh, weight loss as well. And if you remember, um, I've talked about, I think, a couple of weight loss drugs, but um, topiramate actually comes in combination as a brand name product uh, called Qsimia, uh, and that's actually in combination with uh, Phentermine. Uh, mechanistically, um, this drug isn't, you know, crazy well understood, and, and that's, you know, one of the the reasons for that is it's got multiple possible mechanisms that it works through. So one is that it, it helps to enhance GABA. If you remember, GABA is an inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter, so that may be uh, one of the, the pathways that it potentially helps with uh, seizures and things like that. And same thing with blocking uh, voltage-gated so sodium channels. That's also a purported uh, mechanism there. Uh, and then it also uh, has carbonic anhydrase inhibitory action. And, and I'll talk about that a little bit more um, in relation to uh, adverse drug reactions or side effects. Okay, so let's uh, get into those side effects. And uh, by far in practice, what I've seen, uh, the most common complaint you'll get from, from patients is uh, kind of cognitive impairment or cognitive uh, slowing. And the easiest way I remember or associate um, topiramate with that adverse effect is by its brand name. Uh, so I've, I've often heard uh, topiramate or topamax uh, coined as dopamax in, in that it makes you, you know, feel slow or, or stupid or, you know, that kind of that brain fog. Um, these are all kind of terms that I've, I've heard patients uh, describe uh, that feeling as, or they, they cannot think clearly, um, they can't function at, at work in their job, maybe they uh, have a job that requires, you know, multiple tasks and, and doing different things, um, and they just report that they aren't functioning that well uh, at work. So uh, definitely, I would say the, the number one adverse effect that I hear um, patients report, particularly when they start this medication or uh, have dose increases. So in the mechanism of action section, I did mention that carbonic anhydrase inhibitory effect. Um, it's classified generally as a weak uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. So what that's going to do or uh, the potential complications that that can result in is uh, rarely it may increase the risk of metabolic acidosis. And carbonic anhydrase inhibitors will actually lower uh, serum bicarbonate, and that ultimately leads to an increased risk of, of acidosis there. Uh, another potential effect from uh, topiramate is increased ammonia levels. Again, not crazy common. Uh, if you remember, I talked about uh, Depakote or valproic acid before. That's another drug uh, that can do this. Uh, we aren't typically going to, you know, check ammonia levels unless we've got a reason to do so. So elevated ammonia levels, uh, you're going to end up with, you know, symptomatic CNS changes, you know, fatigue, lethargy, uh, confusion, things like that. Um, so if you have a patient that's experiencing those symptoms, 
um, and they are on topiramate, that's a time where you might consider uh, checking an ammonia level to, to see if it's elevated there. Uh, other potential effects, GI upset, dizziness, drowsiness, uh, weight loss. So this can be a good thing. We could be intentionally using topiramate uh, to have this effect. Um, but there are certain patient populations we need to be careful with. So, you know, more so probably in, in my patient population of geriatrics, um, I'm thinking about, you know, frail elderly patients. Uh, we probably wouldn't want to, you know, start them on topiramate um, and potentially induce more weight loss. Uh, if patients overweight and they have migraines, you know, that might be a patient population where, hey, this is a little bit more advantageous to use this, maybe compared to, you know, propranolol for migraine pr prevention, for example. Uh, we do need to be careful in patients with um, eating disorders, anorexia, bulimia, things like that. We obviously don't want to, you know, cause further issues uh, with weight loss. Uh, another unique one, a couple of unique ones with topiramate, um, kidney stones. So that can happen. So um, when I'm educating patients, or if you look on patient education materials, you might see um, recommended to, to take with a full glass of water or maintain adequate hydration. So the reason for this um, is that can help reduce the incidence of uh, getting these renal stones. And then topiramate does have some associations with uh, hyperthermia as well and acute myopia. Um, so some eye issues uh, as well as some, you know, heating and, and cooling issues as well. So uh, hyperthermia, you know, may be a little bit more at risk uh, in patients, maybe if they go, you know, on vacation to a really warm area, for example, and they're not used to heat, that type of thing might increase their risk um, for this adverse effect if they're on other agents that can potentially uh, elevate uh body temperature, such as anticholinergics, that may increase risk. So again, not incredibly common that you're going to see this issue. Um, but however, if you you know happen to work in, in critical care, emergency department, and you're seeing um, a patient present with hyperthermia, uh, it may be part of the differential diagnosis uh, regarding medications. All right, so let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, NAPLEX, ambulatory care, uh, BCMTM, uh, psychiatric certification, geriatric certification, uh, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store. Uh, in addition to that, if you're not a pharmacist, uh, we've got a great book on drug interactions that really breaks down uh, some of the, the more common and more clinically relevant uh, drug interactions kind of broken down with each class and, and medication type. Go check that one out. It's also on Audible, which you can get an Audible book for free if you've never tried Audible. Again, all those links at meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All right, finishing up on drug interactions. Uh, first and, and maybe most obvious is CNS depressant risk. Uh, topiramate can cause some sedation and things like that. So, uh, you know, your opioids, your benzodiazepines, your, uh, you know, sedatives at night, uh, alcohol, those can all kind of have a cumulative effect. Uh, anticholinergic agents, I mentioned those uh, briefly before and their risk for uh, hyperthermia. Uh, in addition, remember, uh, anticholinergics acting in the central nervous system uh, can cause confusion and, and CNS changes in sedation as well. So, um, yeah, definitely anticholinergics on top of topiramate uh, can potentially have some uh, additive effects as far as cognition and some of those CNS adverse effects. Uh, carbamazepine, uh, interesting drug, of course, as always, is an enzyme inducer, can potentially lower topiramate concentrations. Uh, other kind of general uh, interactions, and topiramate has a ton of interactions. So again, this is not an, an all-encompassing list, but um, just throwing out some highlights of things that I've seen in clinical practice or that I pay attention to 
uh, for sure. Um, low uh, potassium. So with that mild carbonic anhydrase activity, uh, there is a potential that topiramate can lower potassium further. And you really want to be careful in patients on loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics because that potassium can uh, drop significantly more um, if we add topiramate to those meds or if we add, you know, a loop or a thiazide uh, to a patient already taking topiramate. And lastly, I definitely wanted to mention uh, topiramate with regards to uh, birth control and specifically uh, oral contraceptives that contain estrogen. Topiramate has the potential to lower estrogen concentration, so this could potentially lead to an increased risk for pregnancy. So in our patients uh, that are maybe taking this for migraine prevention of childbearing age females, uh, we really want to make sure they're educated um, on their risk, and we've discussed risk versus benefits um, when starting topiramate in a, in a patient uh, taking oral contraceptives. All right, so I think that's going to wrap it up for today. If you enjoyed the show, leave a rating review on iTunes. Uh, definitely go uh, check out reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, go subscribe there and get that free uh, PDF. And, of course, go support the sponsor, uh, meded101.com slash store. Uh, lots of books with case studies, drug interactions, um, great opportunities to learn if you're a new uh, healthcare professional in the field. Uh, lots of general clinical practice pearls about medications and, and medication safety. So I uh, hope you uh, enjoy those resources there. I hope you enjoyed the podcast today. Uh, if you want to track me down, uh, go ahead and do that on LinkedIn, Eric Christensen, uh, PharmD, BCGP, BCPS. Um, also email mededucation101 at gmail.com. Thanks all for listening. Uh, take care. Hope you have a great rest of your day.